Locked room mysteries are the most puzzling mysteries ever. These mysteries look as if they are straight from some detective fiction. One such incident happened in Philippines where a Korean girl was found dead in her own apartment. Hi there, welcome or welcome back to my channel Knowledge Noah and in today's video let us know about the mysterious death of Lee Aruda also known as Irene Lee. On the fateful afternoon of June 28, 2012, the lifeless body of Irene Lee was discovered in her residence apartment 1604, situated within the upscale G Tower condominium in Manila, Philippines. G Tower, renowned for housing the affluent middle and upper class residents, was the backdrop of this perplexing incident. Irene Lee, a woman in her 30s of Korean descent, met an untimely demise that, being officially ruled a suicide, bore lingering indications of foul play. The grim discovery unfolded when Irene Lee's business partner, a Filipino gentleman, stumbled upon her lifeless form. His concern had been triggered by her absence from a scheduled meeting the previous day. However, the stringent security measures of the building prevented him from independently approaching her apartment. Instead, he had to enlist the assistance of a building staff member to gain access to Irene Lee's residence. Curiously, the entrance to the residence was reportedly left unlocked, and upon entering, the business partner was confronted with the lifeless form of Irene Lee lying on the floor. She was attired in a comfortable-looking dress, her slippers still on, with both arms raised above her shoulders and wide open eyes, indicating a sudden demise. Despite the absence of visible wounds on her body, there were telltale signs in the form of fingernail marks on her neck, suggesting possible strangulation. A local physician following an autopsy declared that there was no evidence of sexual assault at the time of discovery, even though Irene was reportedly found partially unclothed. Adding to the perplexity, her body was covered from head to toe with a blanket, rendering suicide an implausible scenario, as someone must have placed the covering over her. Aside from the unsettling discovery of Irene's lifeless body, nothing else in the apartment appeared unusual or suspicious. The fan and TV in her room were running when they discovered her and there was no evidence of a break-in or theft according to the local police overseeing the investigation. However, those close to Lee sensed something was amiss. They portrayed her as an exceptionally orderly person, emphasizing that she never left makeup containers open. On the day her body was found, the vanity where she stored her makeup was reportedly in a disarray. Her friends collectively speculated that she might have been in the midst of applying makeup when something urgent compelled her to leave the vanity unattended. Adding to the mystery, the bathroom sink's faucet was left running. The question lingered. Was she preparing to go out or was she anticipating the arrival of someone? Initially, the local police entertained the suspicion that Lee had been murdered by someone familiar to her, with asphyxiation by strangulation identified as the cause of death. The presence of nail marks on her neck led investigators to consider the assailant as a friend or acquaintance, as gaining entry to her heavily guarded condo was deemed challenging. Access to the apartments required visitors to obtain a pass from security, along with a key card for the elevator that only permitted access to the specific floor being visited. In an effort to unravel the circumstances, investigators scrutinized the CCTV footage from the elevator. The footage revealed Lee's movements two days before her demise, on June 26, capturing her solo commute to and from work. These instances constituted the last time she was observed alive on CCTV. It was established that she did not exit her apartment after returning home from work. This led the police to ponder the possibility of someone else residing with Lee. However, recent footage consistently showed her alone while entering and leaving her residence, dispelling the notion of another person being present. Moreover, there was no evidence within the apartment suggesting the presence of another resident or temporary occupant. If you are liking this video so far, please like this video and consider subscribing to the channel. Now back to the video. The question of who could have killed her loomed large as the police found themselves without any leads. Utterly perplexed by the mysterious case, the breakthrough came with a real estate broker previously associated with Lee, disclosed the crucial detail. It was revealed that Lee had obtained a second access card for her apartment not due to expiration or loss of the original card, but because she specifically needed an additional one. Oddly, only one card was discovered at the crime scene, raising questions about the whereabouts of the other. The investigation then took a compelling turn as it was disclosed that Lee had entrusted the second access card to Joseph John Cabrera, her former boyfriend and business partner, known for his considerable wealth. Despite their breakup preceding Lee's tragic demise, Cabrera had not returned the access card. This revelation led the police to consider the possibility that Cabrera could have had unrestricted access to her residence. 
Detectives were on the verge of designating him as the primary suspect, convinced that they had found their culprit. However, certain discrepancies, including the absence of records, eventually ruled out Cabrera. Further scrutiny revealed a lack of any trace of Cabrera at the crime scene. The building's access card readers maintained logs of card scans, and it was established that only the original card issued to Lee when she initially moved in had been scanned in the apartment around the time of the incident. The investigation continued with an air of uncertainty, leaving the identity of the perpetrator thus shrouded in mystery. Moreover, there was no evidence of anyone connected to Lee being captured by CCTV cameras before or after her death, including Cabrera. The investigation had reached a standstill. Both tenants and police were perplexed by the mystery of how someone could infiltrate the heavily fortified building, elude security personnel and cameras, commit the crime and escape without detection. Upon closer inspection of the G Tower, it becomes apparent that the condominium security system was not foolproof. The absence of security cameras in the hallways of each floor is a notable flaw, with cameras installed solely in the elevators. The events that transpired in these hallways, including those on the 16th floor, remain a mystery to everyone except perhaps the resident on the same floor. A Korean resident in apartment 1605 reported to the security staff on the day Lee's body had been discovered that he heard her scream a little past 12 the night before. He allegedly informed the Korean embassy of the incident. However, discrepancies emerged once again, as his account contradicted the findings of the police investigation. Local authorities concluded that Lee died between 9.41 and 10.30 am on June 27, based on records indicating she exchanged text messages with a friend until 9.41 that morning. The timeline did not allow with the neighbor's claim of hearing Lee scream more than 12 hours later, suggesting she was already presumed dead at that time. However, the police refrained from conducting a further investigation into him, citing a lack of evidence directly connecting him to the incident. Notably, this individual vanished a few months later, and law enforcement made no additional efforts to locate him. Surprisingly, the police did not interview any of the tenants on the 16th floor. As the management of G Tower prohibited such inquiries, it is crucial to mention that the initial 48 hours are considered critical in solving homicides. Elevator footage acquisition reportedly commenced approximately two months after the incident due to concerns about tenant privacy. No indications of forced entry or evidence suggesting the presence of any other individuals in the apartment or the building were found. Despite over a decade passing since Lee's death, no new leads or suspects have emerged, and the case remains unsolved. That's gonna do it for today. If you like today's video, please like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell notification to receive all future updates. I hope to meet you in the next one. Thanks for watching.